Hi everyone, this is Mr. V again. Tonight, I'm gonna read you some poems. It's called, Where the Sidewalk Ends. It was written by Shel Silverstein. And if some of your parents were children of mine, when I was a teacher, I probably read them the same poems. So sit back and enjoy. And I hope that everyone is doing fine out there in our distance learning. But this gives me a chance to do some fun things. So sit down and enjoy a few poems by Shel Silverstein. The book is called Where the Sidewalk Ends. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you're a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, come sit by my fire. And we have some flax and golden tails. Come in, come in. The first poem is called The Loser. Mama said, I'd lose my head if it wasn't fast and on. Today, I guess it wasn't. Because while I was playing with my cousin, it fell off and rolled away. And now it's gone. I can't look for it because my eyes are in it. Can't call to it because my mouth is in it. On it. Couldn't hear me anyway because my ears are on it. Can't even think about it because my brain is on it. So I guess I'm going to sit down on this rock and wait a minute. Maybe I can find it. Children, listen to this one. Jimmy Jet and his TV set. I'm going to tell you the tale of Jimmy the Jet. And you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day and he watched all night. He grew pale and lean from the early show to the late, late show and all the shows between. He watched till his eyes were frozen wide and his bottom grew into a chair and his chin turned into a tuning dial and antenna grew from his hair. And his brains turned into TV tubes and his face to a TV screen. And two knobs saying vert and horse grew where his ears had been. And he grew a tail that looked like a plug. So we plugged in little Jim. And now instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. Don't watch too much TV. This one I need your help on, children, because this has animal, animal talking in it. So, whenever I when I say the owl asked, you all say who. When the horse talks, say nay. When the bird says, say cheap. When the dog says, say bow. And when the sheep says, say ba. So you got to remember that because I'm going to come to your spot. Here we go. The farmer and the queen. She's coming. The farmer said to the owl, and what, 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 what shall I do? Shall I bow when she comes? Shall I twiddle my thumbs? The owl asked, hmm. The queen, the queen, the royal queen, She'll pass the farm today. Shall I salute? He asked the horse. The horse said, Nay. Shall I give her a gift? He asked the wren. The lovely little bird. Shall I have it to her keep? An egg or a peach or an ear of corn? The bird said, Cheap. 
But should I curtsy or should I cheer? Oh, there's a carriage now. Oh, what should I do? What should I do? He asked the dog. The dog said, bow. And on that he did, and so she passed. And oh, tra-la-la, she smiled and she did. He told the sheep. The sheep said, bah. Thank you for your help. One more in between here. Oh, this one, you've got to listen carefully. And it has to do with some math and money. So here we go. Smart. My dad gave me a dollar bill because I'm his smartest son. And I swapped those for two shiny quarters because two is more than one. <laughs> and then I took them quarters and traded them to Lou for three dimes. <laughs> I guess he didn't know. But three is more than two. Just then came along old blind Bates, and just because he can't see. He gave me four nickels for my three dimes, and you all know four is more than three. And I took those nickels down to Hiram Coombs down at the seed fee store. And that fool, that silly man, gave me five pennies for my four nickels. I guess he didn't know that five is more than four. And then I went and showed my dad, and he got all red in the cheeks, closed his eyes and shook his head. He was too proud of me to speak. If I were one inch tall, if I were one inch tall, I'd ride a worm to school. The teardrop of a crying ant would be like a swimming pool. A crumb of cake would be a feast and last me at least a week. And a flea would be a frightening beast if I were one inch tall. If you were only one inch tall, you'd walk beneath the door and it would take a month to get down to the store. A bit of fluff would be your bed. You'd swing upon a spider's thread and wear a thimble on your head if you were one inch tall. You'd surf across the kitchen sink on a stick of gum, and you could hug your mama. You just have, you couldn't hug your mama, you just have to hug her thumb. You'd run from people, feed in fright. To move a pen would take all night. This poem took 14 years to write, because I'm only one inch. This poem is called Sick. And it's kind of having to do when we were going to school every day. So here it is. It's called Sick. And you can see the girl in the back. Here we go. I cannot go to school today, said Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps, and my mouth is so dry, my throat is dry, I'm going to be blind in my right eye. My toe, my, my what, what? My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pots, and there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue, I might have instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke, I'm sure my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin, my belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb, I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff, my voice is weak, I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is pulling up in my mouth, I think my hair is falling out. My elbow's bent, my spine ain't straight, my temperature is what a weight. My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. There's a hole inside my ear. 
I have a hangnail in my heart. Oh, oh, what? What? What's that you say? What? Today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going out to play. This one is called the crocodile's toothache. The crocodile, he went to the dentist and sat down in his chair. And the dentist said, now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, oh, I have a terrible truth. I have a toothache in my mouth. And he opened his jaw so wide, so wide that the dentist crawled right inside. And the dentist laughed, oh, isn't this fun? As he pulled out teeth one by one. And the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so. Please put down your pliers and let me go. And the dentist just laughed with a ho, ho, ho. And he said, I still have 12 to go. Oops, that's the wrong one, I confess. But what's one crocodile tooth, more or less? And then suddenly the jaws went <laughs> snap. And the dentist was gone right off the map. To east, west, north, south, he left no forwarding address. But what's one dentist, more or less? Listen to this one, guys. Lester. Lester was given a magic wish by the goblin who lived by the banyan tree. And with that wish, he wished for three more wishes. So now he had four instead of one. He cleverly had this, and with each one of those, he simply wished for three more wishes, which gave him three old wishes plus nine new wishes with all these he wished for 12, he slightly wished for more and more wishes, which added up to 46, or is it 52, I don't know. Well, anyway, he used each wish to create more wishes till he had 5,007,018,034. And he spread them on the ground and clapped his hands and danced around and skipped and sang and then sat down and wished for more and more and more. They multiplied while other people smiled and cried and loved and reached and touched and felt Lester said, amid his wealth, stacked mountain high and like stacks of gold, set and counted and grew old. And then one Thursday they found him there with all his wishes piled around him. And they counted the lot and found that not one single wish was missing. All, all shiny new, here children, take a few wishes and think of Lester as you do. In a world of apples, kisses and shoes, he wasted all his wishes on wishing. This is called Sarah Sylvia Cynthia Stout would not take the garbage out. Sarah Sylvia Stout, Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. So it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, crumbs of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor. It cracked the windows and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones. Prune pits, peach pitch, orange peels, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crust, withered green, soggy beans and tangerines, crust of blackbird butter toast, gusty bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hill. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked in dry curdled milk and crust of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, Eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries and rotten meat, yellow clumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that
that it finally touched the sky. And all the neighbors moved away, and none of her friends would come to play. And finally, Sarah Sylvia Cynthia South said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate. And there in the garbage, poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot now relate. But children remember Sarah Sylvia Cynthia Stout. And always, always take the garbage out. I'm going to introduce you to Dirty Dan. The dirtiest man in the world. Oh, I'm Dirty Dan, the world's dirtiest man. I've never taken a shower. I can't see my shirt. It's so covered with dirt. And my ears have enough to grow flowers. But the water is either a too hot or it's a little too cold. I'm musty and dusty and patchy and scratchy. I'm mungy and covered with mold. But the water is always a little too hot or it's a little too cold. I live in a pen with five hogs and a hen and three squizzly lizards who creep in. My bed and the itch as I squirm and I twitch and the cruddy old sheets that I sleep in. If you look down my throat with a flashlight, you'd see dust and rust. I creak when I walk and I squeak when I talk and every time I sneeze, I blow out dust. The thought of a towel and some soap makes me howl. And when the people have something to tell me, they don't come and tell me. They stand back and yell it. I think they're afraid they might smell me. The bed bugs that leap to me and sing me to sleep and the garbage flies buzz me awake. They're the best friends I found and I fear that I might drown so I never go near a lake. Each evening at nine, I sit down and dine with the termites who live in my chair. And I joke with bats and have intimate chats with the cooties who crawl through my hair. I'd brighten my life if I just found one wife. And I fear that would never be until I can find a girl, gentle and kind, with a beautiful face and sensitive mind, who sparkles and twinkles and glistens and shines, but who's almost as dirty as me. Magical eraser. She wouldn't believe this pencil has a magical eraser. She said I was a silly moo. She said I was a liar too. She dared me to prove that it was true. So what else could I do? I erased her. This is called Double-Tailed Dog. Would you like to buy a dog with a tail on either end? He'd be quite the strangest dog here in town, though he's not too proud at knowing just exactly where he's going. He's very good at sitting down. He doesn't have a place to put a collar, and I'll admit you never have to lead him. And he's caused, he could, and he cannot hear you call because he has no ears at all. But it doesn't cost a single cent to feed him. He cannot bite, he'll never bark or growl. You can scratch him on his tails and he'll be find it pleasing. So you'll have to take him out for twice as many walks. And I'll bet you know the reason. This one is called Hungry Mungry. Hungry Mungy sat at supper, took his knife and spoon and fork, ate a bowl of mushroom soup, ate a slice of roasted pork, ate a dozen stewed tomatoes, 27 double eggs, 15 shrimps, nine baked potatoes, 30 fried chicken legs, a shank of lamb, a boiled ham, two bowls of grits and black eyed peas, four chocolate shakes, eight angel food cakes, nine custard 
pies with minster cheese, 10 pots of tea, and after that, he'd eaten, he was able. He poured some broth on the tablecloth and he ate the kitchen table. His parents said, oh, hungry monkey, stop these silly jokes. Up, oh, he opened up his mouth, go, he ate his forks. And then he went and ate the house and all the bricks and all the wood. He ate up all the people neighborhood. He kept eating and eating and eating. Stop, stop, they said. Go. He ate everybody. Soldiers came with tanks and guns. The hungry Mary said, they can't harm me. Oh, he ate them too. The president and all his bombers. Mungry was all calm. He'd raid back and swallow up those planes and gobble up the bombs. He ate the town, the city, and ate all and ate and ate till he think I'm going to eat the United States. And he ate Chicago, and he munched on the water tower. Then he chewed on Pittsburgh, but he found it rather sour. He ate New York and Tennessee and all of Boston town. Then he drank the Mississippi River to wash it all down. And when he'd eaten every state, every puppy, everything, he wiped his mouth to the sleeve and went to eat the world. He ate the Egypt pyramids and every church in Rome and all the grass in Africa and all the ice in Nome. He ate each hill in green Brazil, and then, for things, he decided, I'm going to eat the universe. He started with the moon and ate the stars, and soon he was done. He gulped up the clouds, he sipped on the winds, and gobbled up the sun. Then, sitting there in the cold, dark air, he started to nibble on his feet. Then his legs, then his hips, then his neck, and then his lip. Till he sat there, but nothing was left to eat. All you could see was his gnashing teeth. Down here at the bottom of the page. And I hope you've enjoyed my little reading of poems. And I wait till I see you next time. Thank you for listening. And have a wonderful rest of the week. <laughs>